Hey guys, welcome back to a quick tutorial where we're going to learn how to pimp our terminal. So if you want to learn more, I'm going to provide some links on the description and that's going to give you some information on some choices and some options that you might want to customize in your terminal experience. Now this tutorial in particular is more for someone who is not as experienced in learning how to customize their environment or just wants to boost their developer workflow who might be a designer who might be a beginner coder who might be just someone who doesn't really know too much about the about working with um, like the system side of things and they just want that experience that is going to give them some really cool features when they're actually using the terminal so with that being said Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to install iTerm2. So iTerm2 is a, a terminal emulator that has a lot of cool features that the regular stock OS does not have. So and it also has a lot of cool themes available online. So we're going to go ahead and download that. Hopefully it doesn't take too long and I should have one available already. And now a quick uh, quick Side note, if you want a terminal that is more of like a designer, more of a, a really beautiful, uh, pleasant experience kind of thing, or a terminal that is just kind of gorgeous in general, I recommend hyper.is. It's really awesome. There's cool plugins and themes that are easily available to download and use right from the site. Uh, for example, this hyperpower is pretty excessive, but it just shoots graffiti every time you type. It's pretty awesome. So in this tutorial, we're just gonna use iTerm2. It's pretty standard and it's very performant and that's kind of why I'm going to iTerm2. So let's go ahead and download that. And we are done here. So we're gonna go ahead and unzip that and we're gonna drag that to our applications direct, our applications location. And I actually already have it, we're just gonna replace it and that's just gonna redownload it. So next, Let's go ahead and open up iTerm and see what that looks like. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit okay for that thing and perfect. So you can see here, it looks very similar, but there's some really neat features that you normally wouldn't get with the stock terminal. Now they used to not offer this feature, but being able to split window panes is something that is pretty cool and useful um, in your everyday workflow. And this is something that uh, I would probably recommend as kind of the first feature you start using once you move over to iTerm2. Now that is actually available in the stock OS terminal now, but you might have not been aware of that. So now what we're going to do is we are going to change our shell environment. And what I recommend is using Zish or Zish or Z shell. So if you don't know where to install it, it I'm going to put that link available, but there is a web page or a wiki that shows you how to install it for different versions. I'm going to follow the direction to install it on Mac OS. We're going to use brew to install it. So we're going to go ahead and download that. I'm going to fast forward this because you obviously do not need to see this. So actually I already had it installed already. Okay. So I just to make things faster and you would just run that and the formula would run through and you would install it then in there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our shell environment to our new Z shell. So to do that, we're going to do the change shell command with the dash S flag. If you're on Mac, of course, and I'm going to change that to bin Z shell. So enter my password real quick and perfect. Now, the next thing you want to do is I would recommend installing oh my Z or my Z shell. And this is kind of like a prepackaged uh, framework for Z shell that has a bunch of themes, plugins, and kind of sets a lot of things up for you. It's really easy to install. The first thing we need to do is just, we're gonna download it through curl and download the script through curl and then install it. Now, you should never just grab some random you know, curl uh, and then execute a script like that. It's pretty dangerous. But in this case, I mean, I know I'm on uh, this very popular GitHub repository so I'm gonna go ahead and trust it with all my faith okay perfect now we have that download we have installed we can already see that our 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 terminals already been kind of updated and it has a new theme and it looks different and it's pretty exciting but next what we're going to do is we're going to install what I like which is let's see hold on a second cool so everything is working just as I thought we're going to install a prompt that I think is really pleasantly is pleasant beautiful and it's simple and I recommend this prompt and it's called pure prompt and it's installed through NPM so if you don't have node installed you're gonna have to install node and then the package manager 
Um, but it's pretty easy. All you have to do is do npm install global pure prompt. I'm assuming a lot of you already have, especially if you've done my tutorials. So we have that installed and we are pretty much ready. Now we have to just update our configuration file for our Z shell. And that's pretty simple. So we're going to go ahead and just open, um, just type in VI. Well, yeah, let's do it that way because it's going to be a little bit easier than doing probably nano. So, and so we're going to just update that Z shell file configuration file. So just do the tilde slash dot Z S H R C. So I'm going to do VI. Um, you don't have to do VI. You can do whatever text editor or you want to use. I'm just going to use Vim in this case. And so as you can see here, this is a configuration that was loaded from oh my Z or my Z shell. And what we need to do in order for us to use the peer prompt is we need to disable the theme that is set here. So I'm going to look to make sure that there is no theme set here. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I don't believe there's a theme set here yet. Oh, there is. No, there is not. Oh, here it is. Yes. So the Robbie Russell theme is set by default as what we saw earlier. So I'm just going to comment that line and we're going to save that. And if we execute our shell to reload, you should see that we're back to this like ugly prompt looking thing. And if you don't know, the prompt is that line that is prepended before, before your commands. And you can do a lot of cool customized features there. And that's the reason why we're going to be using pure prompt. Now, oops, I totally forgot. We should, now we need to set our prompt to pure prompt. So let's go back to that configuration file. So I'm going to use Vim. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. If you haven't used Vim, just hit I enter and paste cool and i'm gonna do that we're gonna so we do colon wq to write and quit and now we're gonna reload our shell one more time which is gonna be execute shell and let's see what happens awesome if you see here we have the pure prompt that we were shooting for and the cool thing about pure prompt is if you go to a project that has a directed get to it you can see like the branch that it's on it can uh, indicate with this arrow i forgot what the arrow indicates uh like the if it's up to date with the upstream or like meaning like it's up to date with the remote state or not um and it's a really clean simple prompt and that's why i generally like to use this prompt over some of the available prompts uh from the oh my z shell framework now go ahead and just you know experiment and look at some of those themes if you really want to customize that there are some pretty cool ones and some some og ones like powerline for example that have some really cool looking features but for me i'm more of a minimalist and this is kind of the perfect prompt for me so after that the next thing we're going to do and the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to set the color themes for eye turn because honestly this does not look good in my eyes and i do not like that so we're going to go to iterm to colorschemes.com and we're just going to find a theme that kind of matches with our prompt color scheme um i would probably prefer something with like a darker blue background so maybe this blazer theme looks pretty good so let's go ahead and i'm going to show you how to install that all right so as you can see here it is opening this xml file we're going to hit save as and we're just going to save that as the iterm2 colors extension at the very end of it i'm going to save this blazer theme that's kind of annoying because even though i do do that extension it actually still appends the dot text file to it so i need to remove that so just click on that and hit enter and we're gonna just remove that extension and it's gonna say do you want to keep the dot txt i'm gonna say no use dot item colors all right so what we're going to do is we're going to import that theme onto iterm2 so go to iterm hit preferences and go to profiles and we're going to create a new profile called cool blazer theme and we're going to go to the colors here and we're going to import from the color preset and you'll see the blazer iterm2 colors hit hit uh, import on that and now you'll see it show up here and we're gonna hit blazer cool so that's now what you will want to do is you're gonna want to set that as your default theme and when you open a new tab so I'm gonna close out of that you'll see that we have this blazer theme set up so pretty awesome and 
there we go. We have pretty much a awesome pimped out terminal for you to start using and start experimenting with.